one new message and four old messages. This message is for Dave of BarbecueMyWay.com. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is a king. Everybody thinks I'm dead. But when the top of the comes around, I come around. As you know, I lived in Memphis at Graceland. I used to love grilled peanut butter and nana sandwiches and rendezvous ribs. Later in my career, when I was doing my shows down in Vegas, I'd have my rendezvous ribs blown in first class. That's right, I did it my way. And when they arrived, I would say, Thank you. Thank you very much. So they please take this request seriously from the king, back from the dead. Do a barbecue my way, YouTube video on Rendezvous Ribs. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. If you've ever been to Memphis, Tennessee, surely you've heard of Rendezvous Ribs. It's in its back alley in downtown Memphis. It's been there for years. In fact, it was Elvis's favorite rib joint. He used to send people down there late at night to get him ribs. And there's something different about these ribs. There was a guy that founded the place named Charlie Virgos. And he was a hamburger guy. He didn't know anything about pork. So he decided to try pork because it was so cheap. And he did ribs. And he did them over charcoal, which is what he did his hamburgers over. The problem is when he cooked them, he just used normal Greek flavorings. So they didn't have any color. So a salesman came by that sold him the pork and said, if you're going to do this, you need to add chili powder and paprika to give the ribs a nice color. So he did that and the rest is history. These ribs have more of a Greek seasoning to them and what's really unique, as I've said, is they're put over charcoal and not hard wood. So they're not even barbecued uh, ribs, they're charcoal ribs or charbroiled ribs and that's what he calls them. And then the rub or the spices are applied after they're done. This is a great, great rib. You've got to give this a shot. Let's go fire up the grill. All right, one of the biggest ongoing debates about ribs is what sort of rib do you use? You've got the baby back rib, and then you've got the spare rib. Spare rib's a little bigger and meatier, but it takes a little bit more preparation than the baby back. But there's more meat to it. So tonight, I've got to feed the whole family. I'm doing spare ribs. So there's three things you need to do to spare ribs. The first is this flap on the back. You definitely want to take that off. It's a tough piece of meat with membrane. You can go, we'll go ahead and throw it on the grill as, as some uh, hors d'oeuvres, but that's the first thing you want to do. All right, the second thing, we've taken the flap off. You've noticed that there's a lot of meat here that's kind of a skirt that's not part of the rib structure. So we're going to go ahead and cut that off because we're going to make this a, a rack of ribs. Now I'll go ahead and grill this too. Or barbecue it because we'll be able to nibble on that, but we want to make sure the presentation of the ribs is actual ribs. The third thing and the most overlooked thing is to take the membrane off the back of the ribs. It creates toughness, and I've already got it started. It takes a little time to get her going, but then once you get it going, you just rip the whole thing off, and that's going to expose the meat portion on the back of the bone, take away the toughness, and allow some of that nice rub and spice to get in there. And now we're going to make the famous rendezvous rib rub. Tongue twister. Let's start with one third, one third cup of sweet paprika. Two tablespoons of chili powder. One tablespoon of garlic powder. One tablespoon of oregano. One tablespoon of kosher salt. One teaspoon of coarse ground black pepper. Two teaspoons of whole mustard seed. One teaspoon of whole celery seed. All right, a lot of times your spices have been sitting a little bit, so what we're gonna do is not just mix it, we're going to put a little crushing motion into it. It'll kind of release the spices and make them uh, taste as fresh as possible. All right, we've added two tablespoons of the uh, rub that we just made. I like to throw my own little touch in. We have our own kicker that we throw in, which gives it just a little bit more flavor. And I'll, I'll add some of that to the rub as well. And then we add a cup of water, a cup of distilled white vinegar, And then remember there's salt in this mix, so you just want to whisk it up until the salt dissolves, and this is what we're going to be basting onto the ribs as they cook. All right, we've got the ribs on. We use something called a rib rack, if you can point the camera down here so you can see what we're looking at. The rib rack allows you to get more ribs on than if I just laid them flatly. So we've got indirect heat. Remember, we're just using uh, charcoal. charcoal. We're not using any wood at all, because that's the way they do it at Rendezvous. And now, before we put the rib on, or the lid on, we're going to apply the first application of the mop, as it's called. 
which has the vinegar, the water, the kicker, and the rub itself. Then we're putting the lid on, and we just monitor it in a couple hours, we should have some great ribs. All right, we just direct grilled them. They've come off. We're going to start cutting them up. Nice and perfectly cooked. Beautiful. Absolutely riveting. She likes your ribs, Dave. Lovely. It's a big plate of ribs, a big plate of, plate of Memphis ribs for such a couple of petite little girls. Mm, these are good. <laughs> are they? No, they really are good. Are they? Best, best rib ever. You like any numbers? Mm -hmm. The rendezvous has nothing on you. Elvis isn't here, though. Well, maybe Elvis will show up. We'll see. You never know. Never know. All right, the king of rock and roll, Elvis himself, called and left me a voicemail. Surely you can rate me a five, and if you haven't subscribed, let's subscribe. Let's get this party going.